Okay, let's go ahead and get ourselves back together for the second for the second part of class today. We're going to talk about design options, and we're also going to talk a little about how to do area plans and kind of keep track keep track keep track of areas. I can't talk this morning. I don't know what it is. We'll get it right. Okay. For working with our design options, why don't you go ahead and we'll stay within the model for assignment two. Why don't you stay right in that one so that, oh, did we ever get down the internet? No, I think hmm. I okay, now, let's do it. Okay. Let's stay over in the uh, assignment two model because we'll just really illustrate it right in here um, the way you're going to be working with it. So here is the idea. For design options, as we go working, it's all about creating this just hierarchy of things where we have different sets of options, and then we have specific options underneath each of those different sets. And again, you can use this sort of very generally. You know, we did it the other day in terms of overall shapes of buildings, so we had an option set, which is the overall shape of the building, but it can be really, very fine, too. You can do down an option set, which is just really a furniture arrangement within a wing of a building. You can do an option set, which is different sort of uh, um, exterior envelope kind of window positions. And just control individual little pieces of it. Really, the idea is within every option set, you're going to choose one of those options as the one that you want to display. But you can have as many as you want for all the different things where you want to have a little bit of variability. And the advantage of doing option sets, let's just kind of stop and talk about what that is. If you didn't use option sets and you wanted to sort of have design option A versus B, you'd kind of create a file and you'd you know, make your changes for A and save that away. Then you'd do a save as and you'd make file B and you'd put them over here. And you'd open A or you'd open B and that would be kind of okay. Until you actually had to make a change that you wanted to have affect both of the different files. Okay, And that's really why we will try to use option sets is that if you have two separate files, you get into the sort of maintenance burden of sort of things that are common between the two, trying to remember whether you made all the changes in one in the other file. And by setting up option sets, it's really just all about saying you don't have to maintain two or three different files. Everything common stays common. You just really change things around the edges where you want to make those changes. So it's, it's really all about an efficiency. I know it creates sort of a conceptual hassle to remember which option set you're working in, okay? But it's really all about just making your work more efficient. Pop into here. Okay. In terms of creating the option sets, we already set these up, but how you do it is you open the design options in the manage tab, you create a new option set, then you create options within them. So in our model, just so you can see, and you can create as many other option sets as you want to, you go to the manage tab and choose design options. Then within design options, we set up one set of options for your student center options and another for the auditorium options. Okay, And within those option sets, we could again have more different options. We could have more sets if we want. Okay, But there's always one which is the primary option. And what is that primary option? That's the leading candidate. That's the one that based on if you had to send it out the door today with no more work, which one would you go with? Okay, and that's, you know, we always sort of have a favorite, you know, at least the one that's the leading candidate, and that's the one it is, and what it buys it by being the primary is in any of you, if you haven't told it anything otherwise, if you haven't specified anything more particular, it'll show the leading candidate, so that's considered part of the main model. Okay, we could always adjust views to show the secondary candidates, but the leading candidate's always shown in the main model. Okay, so... Let's actually just kind of play with that a little bit and see how it really you know, plays out. I'll come back over to the slides for a second. Okay, One option is the primary. That's fine. It's displayed automatically. I can edit those. Yeah, we'll leave that in a second. Okay, Let's come back and actually play. So let's go through and create something, and we will create some options. So let's close on over here. I'll go over to phase two. Let me zoom on out a little bit. And I'm going to just sort of uh, create some options. Oh, I'm going to put them over here on the right-hand side of the building. I'm going to pull on over there, kind of in student center land. OK. Often as I'm designing, I'm not even thinking about my option sets yet. I'm just starting to create some basic shapes. 
So let me create some, uh, oh, just real basic shapes that we could start working with. I'm going to, for example, oh, use my stone veneer panels. And maybe create, oh, kind of a nice big rectangular building that I'll sort of say is maybe my overall student center looks something like that. Okay, and oh, and in my early thinking, let me create another sort of series of walls. Maybe I have some sort of auditorium. It's kind of up over here somewhere. <coughs> Move my crop boundaries so it'll be included. Then even between those two different buildings, oh, I'm just doing some, just thinking ahead, I'll probably have some walls. Maybe they're going to be curtain walls or something like that to go between the two. So I'll choose mm, kind of the storefront glazing. And I'll have some sort of a curtain wall that goes here. <coughs> and I'll have some sort of curtain wall that goes there that just connects the two. It's kind of like the physics fence or something like that. So let's go out there and take a look. Oh, looks like I'm cursed with short walls again because I didn't actually go through and uh, make them any taller. Let me go through and put those at least up to the second level. Three feet tall is not very tall. Let me grab these two while we're at it. I'm control clicking to get them all. Okay, that's my start. And even for these walls out here, I could start making them taller. I start copying and pasting them and aligning them between floors. But I'm just going to focus on this first level as a starting point just to kind of keep it simple. So I've just been doing my design development. I haven't really kind of thought very carefully about where this is all going just yet. But let's take a look at that auditorium and kind of think about what some of our options might be over there. Okay, One way we might approach this is we could say, OK, for my auditorium options, I really have the notion of just different shapes of buildings. I want to sort of look at a round auditorium versus a square auditorium. And that's just sort of one way to look at it. You can look at something else. You can look at rows being configured differently or different window patterns, all sorts of different things. In fact, well, yeah, let's just even do it that way. Now I'll do that over on the other one. Okay. Uh, as I've gone through and created this building over here, if I want to decide that in my options, I want to entertain sort of this round one versus a square one in terms of the shape of the auditorium, okay. if I've already created it and it's sitting in found in around in my main <coughs> model, that's okay. I can put it into an option set. I just have to sort of move it over there. So I could have created it inside the option set, but let me take that existing building and move it in. And how <coughs> I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab the two different walls that I think are going to move over there. Under the Manage tab, you'll find not only sort of kind of picking a set to uh, an option set to edit, you'll find something called adding to a set. And we'll show you what it does. It actually shows me of the different option sets, and I'm going to go to the auditorium options, like all the options that are defined right now. And I get to choose which ones I want to add this thing to. Kay. I could add it to one or I could add it to both. It doesn't really matter. Let me just add it to both. and take a look at what happens. When I add something to an option set, the things that I've added into that option set are now completely independent but duplicate copies. So at this point, if I go over and say that I want to edit option A, okay, I'm looking at sort of uh, one set there. Oh, not student center options. Hang on, auditorium options. Excuse me. Okay, I got this set of walls. I can go through and start doing things like putting windows in those walls. It's not a very good looking auditorium, but you'll get the idea. Kay. And maybe in this option, I'm going to go through and split that on this side. From here over to here. And make that part of the curtain wall, something like that. Again. I'm just sort of experimenting right now. There's not a grand plan behind what I'm doing. Okay, But that's starting to be my option A. I'm developing my first idea for what I want the auditorium to be. No worries. 
If I go back over to the Manage tab and say instead look at option two for the auditorium, you'll see it's still the same because it made a duplicate copy. They're completely separate of each other. Okay. If I go to main right now, okay, option one's going to show up because that's the primary. So if I sent out the set of drawings today, it's going out like this. So I can play around and just even at a very basic level start messing around with, oh, maybe an option two. I'm just going to try a different glazing pattern. So I will say modify, and I'll play around with the glazing over here instead. So I could start playing around like that and have option one versus option two being things like that. I could also start playing around with the overall shape of the building, anything else that I want to play around with. So for example, I have two different options which are sort of round one and round two right now. Let me go back to manage and in design options just to be good about this. Let me finish editing it because then I can start editing the name. Let me rename that one. Call that one round one. And I'll go through and call that one round two. Give yourself names that are actually descriptive so to help yourself out a little bit later. If everything is just option one, option two, option three, it becomes really confusing to figure out what it is you're looking at. Maybe I'll create another option <coughs> underneath here. And I'll call this, oh, rename it. Auditorium Rectangular. So within that one, let's go ahead and decide what we want to do. If I go to Auditorium Rectangular right now, you'll see there's not a whole lot hanging around in there. So I can draw it and just choose whichever view you want to be doing it in. Actually, let me just do it in the, the floor plan view. Okay. Since it's still Auditorium Rectangular, that's what I'm editing right now. And I'll fix that in advance this time. Oh, because the circular one was only in option one or option two. So since, it, since it's in an option, it's no longer in the main. So even if you added two options, it would become only in the option. Yes. So when you saw, let's, let's Look at that real carefully, because that's a good point. And I want to answer your question, too, in just a second here. Okay, So let me go back to main. I'll go back over to design options. Let me uh, finish editing this one. Say close. OK, I'm back in the main model. So if I take something <coughs> and I put it in the main model, okay, that's in the main model now. That isn't, oh actually, since it's in the main model, it'll show up when you're editing option one or option two because main's everywhere. Okay, if I take that guy now and I grab him, put him to the last gazebo, and I uh, put him into an option, add it to a set, I can choose which ones I want to put it into. And I can choose, maybe that's, maybe these are part of my student center options. I can put it in A, I can put it in B, or I can put it in both. Okay, and if I only want it to be A, I'll just choose that. So what happens now? In main, it still shows up because option A is the primary there. But I shift over to B, and it's not there. But notice that there's these two different decisions. One is what to do about the gazebo, and there's another one, what to do about the auditorium. And the two are really independent decisions, but it'll always show your choices from those two decisions relative to each other. Okay, so let's see. Did, did that answer your question? Or yeah, okay. Now, confusing. It's a little odd in terms of what's going on here. Okay, so within those options, let's go back over to the main model. The cool thing is you can have options within options. It really doesn't matter. It's really just sort of alternate ways of doing things. For example, even right now, within sort of uh, the auditorium shape, I could have two different options for the furniture arrangement within them. Okay, that's okay too. How would I do that? I'll just come back to design options. 
I'll say new option set, and I can rename that. Okay, furniture in auditorium. So I could have, oh, option one versus option two down there, where one's going to be, oh, what I'll call like linear rows. And the other one's going to be, let me say, curved rows or something like that. So I'm over here. I got the auditorium. I can say linear rows. Okay, now I'm going to start editing. Now, these options, what is it? They're not hierarchical in the sense that I could go ahead and make a bunch of linear chairs that are going to fit inside the round auditorium shell. And if I change it to the rectangular auditorium shell, they won't know that. Okay, so I might have to have different sets of furniture options that apply to the different shapes. Okay, because they're, they're not smart that way. It really is kind of two independent options. So you do have to go ahead and make sure that your different choices for your options correspond to each other, that they're actually sort of like, uh, you know, that they're compatible with each other. But let me go ahead and I said I'd make some linear rows of chairs. Let's show you how you might do that. Oh, I'll put a component in here. Let's see if I can find some auditorium seating. And I think I'll find that under furniture. Seating, I do have auditorium seating. Check that out. So I can put a nice little auditorium chair. Wow. You kind of get a sense of how big my auditorium is <laughs> relative to my little dinky chair. Okay, this auditorium is probably bigger than you need. Okay, <laughs> once you have those chairs, let's go ahead and I will, oh, what do I want to do? I want to array them. Modify furniture. There it is. There's the array tool. The array tool lets me say, hey, I want to do a chair that's this far away from that chair, and I'll put, oh, 10 of them in a row. Okay, now I got some nice linear row of chairs. And I can go ahead and move those around and copy them. This is a very spacious auditorium. Okay, and I could even take those and mirror them across or something like that. This is, this is way more spacious than your average auditorium is. I chose an axis that wasn't quite uh, very uh, linear, or it was at a funny angle. Let me say draw a line instead. <laughs> well, well I'm having so much trouble. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. Mirror, draw the line. I'm holding down the shift key. Okay. so. That could be one set of options. That is really just now my linear rows. Okay, With those in place, I can say, hey, I want to shift to a different design option. Go to Manage. And instead, I'll switch over to Curved Rows. Those will disappear because they're in the linear. They're not anywhere else. And I'll go ahead and put the Curved Rows in. So let me again, I'll place <coughs> some of these things. Manage. Uh, oh, actually, Home Component. I'll put sort of a chair in here. Let me show you how you do a sort of a curved array. It's kind of a cool concept <coughs> too. I can take a chair and I can array it. And instead of being linear, I could do a radial array. So I get to sort of choose where the axis of that rotation is, maybe out here somewhere. And then I can say from here over to there. And I'll say, oh, make uh, like 10 of those. Well, that wasn't very good. No worries. The nice thing about arrays is you can pull them back in, and they'll sort of space themselves out nicely. Okay. So I can create a nice, mm, cancel that, arrayal row. I can go through and copy that around. And go through and mirror that over to the other side. Okay. Yes, Sophia. Can you create a line between the radius and the radius? 
yeah, well, to do that, let's talk about that. What we would want to do is, it's, it's actually move the center of the rotation in. So let's see if we can figure that out. It even sort of looks kind of squashy relative to on my screen. Let's see if we can make this work. I'll just put it kind of right about in here. What I really, if I want to really get it to align, what I want to do is figure out where the center line of those walls are. Okay, and let me see if I can make that work for you. Sometimes to do center lines of funny things like uh, big curved surfaces, what I end up doing is drawing what I'll call construction lines. And I'll draw one over here somewhere. <coughs> just based on the midpoint. Just all I'm trying to do is locate the center. So now with that in place, I can do an array. And I'll do a radial array. And this is the part you have to watch out for the radial. It's really where is the center of the rotation. And now I can start to do this whole thing and say, oh, there's 50 of them. Oh, that would close over, you know, <laughs> that would close over. It only wants to do up to 360 degrees. Wow. What's that? <laughs> Thank you. I should, you mean I should actually pay attention to what it's telling me? Okay. So I can start to create more of a, a radial something. Like that. So lots of ways of playing with that. But again, this is all one design option. So if I go back over to manage, I got my linear rows, I got my curved rows. And again, that's a valid design option choice. So as you think about your assignment, okay, don't think that you have to go through and redesign the entire auditorium or redesign the entire student center. It's enough. I just want you to sort of play with options and controlling those. It's enough just to sort of move a couple walls, <laughs> add a couple windows, change the arrangement of the furniture. It's not like a whole new building. It's just sort of a, a variation in with the building. Okay, because the yeah, university doesn't want you to design four different buildings. It just wants you to sort of show that there's a little flexibility in your outer shape to demonstrate that we could sort of reconfigure it if we needed to. Okay? So that's where we want to go with design options. Now let's talk about controlling design options because there's this whole issue where we got the options. Here's where the rub comes in the options, and that is when you go on back to the main model, it always seems to be showing this, which is the primaries. Okay, so cool if you always want to be printing out the primary options, but if you would actually like to print out a plan that showed me your design option, we've got to do it a little bit differently. Okay, let's talk about how that works. Let me go ahead and duplicate this view. You're going to find I duplicate views a lot these days. And I'm going to rename this. And I'll call it Auditorium Seating A, or 1, or even <coughs> linear if I want to be really clear about it. Okay, And I'm going to duplicate that view again. I'm going to call this one auditorium seating round. Okay, so we got two different views, linear and round. Linear seems to be showing the right thing, but round isn't showing the right thing. Okay, and here's again the mistake you'll make all the time, because I always do this too. You'll say, oh, but you know, I, I set it to curved rows. Okay, there it is, super, my view looks fantastic. I'll go away. I'll come on back, still looks good because we're still editing curved rows. But as soon as you somehow get out of that, okay, that view pops on back. Okay, because this view is always showing you whatever it says that you're trying to edit over here. Okay, if it's set up to be an automatic view. So it's always going to kind of keep on changing. So what happens, you'll think you're printing out the right thing, but you aren't. Because when it prints, it'll always go back to the main model. So here's what you got to do. For each of these different views, like auditorium seating round, there are, it's kind of weird, it's not a view property. I'd like to think of it as a view property. It's something that's a visibility graphics setting, okay? It's the other side. And under that, you'll actually find a design options tab. And in that design options, you can control whether you want to show the automatic. The automatic being whatever is kind of the main, okay, or show you whatever is currently selected in that menu. Or you can explicitly choose that you want it to be the curved rows. Okay, so let's talk about that. Over here, I can explicitly choose this one. 
view, visibility graphics, and I'll explicitly choose that one to be the linear. And now what is the advantage of doing this explicit stuff? <coughs> it's that when you come back over to auditory and seating round, it'll be round. And that one will be the linear option. And this will actually be even overriding what you've selected over here. So if you choose curved rows, okay, they're active there. But even here, you've chosen curved rows, but you can't edit the curved rows. Why? Because this view is not going to show you those curved rows no matter what. You told it explicitly to show you the linear rows. Okay, So there's this funny little bit of an interaction between this menu over here, which always shows whatever you've kind of selected as your current editing set, versus the visibility graphics and what you've actually controlled here. But the thing to remember, what I really want you to carry out of this is, Okay, let's put things in options. That's cool. Kind of be pretty fluid about it. It's actually not that hard in terms of what's going on. But watch out for what visibility graphic is this set up for? What design option is it set up to display in that? So again, how you do that, just and we'll do that again slowly, just to kind of reinforce that, is when you choose an option, even in here, oh, let me go ahead and do another one. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Rename this. Actually, not rename that. I'm going to dupe it. I'm going to rename this to be my auditorium square or auditorium rectangular. Okay, so I've set it. It's still showing me the round one in there. How do I actually make that show the auditorium rectangular? I got to go to the view and the visibility graphics for the view and then say design options and choose that I want to show the rectangular. Now this is a case where again I have sort of two things that are a little out of sync with each other. I have a rectangular auditorium and I have a like a round set of seating. So you want to control to make sure that all your options are sort of in alignment with each other. Okay, You don't have to do four different sets, you can sort of have two different sets and just turn on A and B or C and D, but not A and C. It's that whole thing. So that's all there is for design options. It's just kind of work with it. Don't get too caught up in it. It's really just more about that you can sort of do two different things and control the view. Does that make sense? Beauty.